Yeah. That's why folks contort themselves to change what history really says, rewriting textbooks and taking it to a whole different extreme to ensure that we don't understand the true impact of us building this joint for free. But I digress. I want equal funding for HBCUs. And I want accountability for law enforcement via damages awarded to victims of last week and also for racial profiling. Yeah. I want a designation. This is a state-based school, so listen to this. I want a designation for descendants of United States slaves in college admissions. Yeah. Georgetown, which is a private school, but Georgetown University started this but didn't go far enough. But this designation should also apply to hiring practices from entry level to senior executive posts, in corporate vendor utilization programs, in corporate board placements, in access to capital, and in local, state, and federal contracting practices. I want these political parties that I said can be bipartisanly racist to be accountable to us before six weeks before an election and beyond election day. There's a program that Congresswoman Waters worked diligently to fight for in Dodd-Frank, um, which kind of served as an overhaul of uh, financial services uh, regulations for the federal government, and it was for offices of minority and women inclusion. And I want those offices in every federal agency, agency, not just financial services agencies, which, which is what was applied in Dodd-Frank. That will ensure that we get not only equal opportunity in those federal government jobs, but also in the contracting spaces that we just talked about. I want to get rid of the damn electoral college. <laughs> that was something they established by considering us as three-fifths and not able to voice our own representation. So if that's the foundation, then we have to destroy the thing from the foundation. It's time for it to go. So I named several things, but I know I missed even more. And I want you all to be thinking about what part of this you'll carry. What aspect of these issues will you champion? What are you doing with your power? We're warming seats, y'all, at a black power rally. And there are loads of issues that we're carrying as a community. So what are you doing with your power? I urge you to be the change that you want to see in this country. Understand the importance that our unity has in shaping this country to be better, to do better. We won't see any of these things happen if there aren't substantial changes, starting with us. How are you using your power? This marks the 45th year that you've had this rally. 45 times. Where are we now? Is Flint and its water crisis 48 miles away or not? Is Detroit and its economic devastation 60 miles away? Mm -hmm. And don't trip because gentrification is coming while you sleep on Detroit. Oh. Come on. Folks are applauding because you want to do something to actively work against that and not in favor of gentrification. Mm -hmm. Did Michigan get rid of affirmative action in 2006 and not reinstate it or not? Where you at, Spartans? Not here for that. Seriously, shit. there's a lot of work to do in your own backyard. We're fighting against real oppression in your own backyard. And earlier we talked about examples that exist on your own campus. What are you doing with your power? Did this state vote for bigot ass Donald Trump or not? Yeah. Well, not I. Know, I. Russia might have helped a little bit. We Zuri's still out on that. But you understand the point. How are you using your power? Are you putting your body on the line? What about your mind? How about 
your time? How are you using the power of your talents to move the culture forward? You do it for the grand for the culture all day. But if you aren't building a legacy, you aren't changing lives like that on the ground. Yeah, okay. So Colin Kaepernick took the brave stance of taking a knee to call attention to police brutality in this country before there was a take a knee hashtag. But some of you can't even turn off the games. Some of you can't stop wearing their apparel. But you want to dress like him for Halloween. Okay, bro. And one of your alums, my sister friend, Jamel Hill, taking on the powers that be at ESPN and white supremacy, not just on Twitter, but everywhere. Go oh, white. How did you all, Spartans, support our dear sister? I turned off the channel. Okay, he stopped watching ESPN, but you hear it's quiet in here. We have to do better. We think about what's going on with the Democratic Party right now. I don't know how many of you all are following the news. But the party's in shambles, and it was in shambles long before Donna Brazile's book excerpt came out. That's okay. Now, don't trip. The Republicans are much worse off, uh, especially as it relates to issues of race. But the Democratic Party has some cleaning up to do. They're mad at Donna Brazile, but I'm mad about the fact that just a week and a half before that, Congresswoman Frederica Wilson was getting dragged by the President of the United States and I didn't hear from the Democratic Party. Yeah, so we got some cleaning up to do. And I know this isn't a Democratic power rally, it's a black power rally, but we need to be clear about where our intentions, our attention, and where our loyalty has lied. And it's time for those same folks to be loyal back to us. We laid out an agenda and we need to hear where they stand on that agenda. There are nearly 46 million black people in this country. If just 45 million of us, I know that's a lot, but if we get $27 like they did in the Bernie campaign one time, we would have over $1.2 trillion. One time. That's the size of New York's economy. Do you know what we can do with $1.2 trillion? So Dr. King said, one can't ride your back unless it's bent, right? We have to stand tall. We can't afford to be bent over, begging, asking, pleading. It's time for us to stand tall, make our demands clear, make our power clear, ensure that people, our people first, understand our economic power political power, understand our collective power, and moving our agenda along. So now we have to answer the same question that they were asked that night on January 12, 1865. What do we want for our own people? If you, like me, answer freedom, then it's time for us to go. I say work woke, it's time for us to work woke. Say work woke. Work woke. We don't have time for another dinner, another Black Power Rally. Let us not get to Black Power Rally 46, and we have not harnessed our collective power. The next time someone asks you, even if it's 45, or I call them orangey, <laughs> what in the hell do you have to lose? You need to boldly proclaim everything. It's time for this country to stop reciting the Pledge of Allegiance and start actively working on truly ensuring that we become one nation under God with liberty and justice for all. And that's not for some, that's for all. Yeah. And until then, I'm not standing for the flag. I'm not standing for the pledge. I'm not standing for the national anthem because that's not my truth. 